What's happening guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm answering your questions about all the gear that I'm currently using. So obviously I've done a whole bunch of lens reviews, I've owned a lot of different lenses that I don't own at the moment, but this is all the stuff that I currently own and use at weddings. If you guys don't know, I'm a full-time wedding photographer. I really only do weddings as my income. Uh, I do a few family portraits and stuff if I get asked to do it, but weddings are my income. And this is what I use as a pro Sony based wedding photographer. Let's go over all my kit. There's a whole bunch of stuff to go over. I do video as well. So we're going to talk a little bit about the audio stuff I carry, plus a few wedding day extras. So let's just jump into it. I am going to put timestamps in the video so you can have a look in the description and go to the different sections because I don't want this video to drag on too long. And if you guys just want to see a particular set of items, you can go and check that out in the description with the timestamps. But straight away I'm going to get into the cameras I use and the lenses I currently own. Because let's be honest, that's what most people want to see, right? So in terms of cameras, I use the Sony a7R Mark III. This is one of them. I have two copies. The other one is filming right now. And on here at the moment I have the 85mm G-Master. This is my probably second most used lens, I would say. And at the moment I obviously have the battery grip on it. I'm not always using the battery grip. This is just something I had on because I was doing photo and video for an entire day. And I just thought I'll use a battery grip for both the cameras because it's just easier. I'm never going to have to change the batteries. Uh, in fact, one of the cameras I never even used one battery and the other one I used like one and a quarter. So it's just nice to have if you want to use it and it does add a little bit of grip. But I have other grips that I usually use which we'll get to in the other section. I have made a video about the a7R 3 and the a7 III and I own the A9 as well. So if you guys want to see why I'm using the a7R 3s you can see that video in the link below also. The next lens, and this is definitely by far my most used lens, is the 24mm Sony G Master F1.4. I shoot pretty much 90% of a wedding day with this, uh, mostly all the groom prep, all the bride prep, all the bridal portraits I use this lens for, other than a couple of shots with the next lenses coming up. But predominantly I use a 24mm as my main workhorse for weddings and I use the 85 for like the ceremony and the speeches just for those close-up shots. I really love how this lens looks. At 1.4 it's really really sharp and you can get a really nice wide angle and still have quite a shallow depth of field which is a really interesting effect and I really really love it. The next lens I have is the 35mm 1.8. This is the new one that Sony have just bought out recently. It's not something I use a whole lot but if I just want to use one camera and one lens I'll usually take the 35 if not the 24. 35 is a really good kind of street walk around lens or for like family portraits. You can easily do a whole family session or like an engagement shoot with the 35 and 1.8 no worries at all. So if you're a little bit more comfortable with 35 I really like this lens. I did also just do a review about all the 35mm autofocus lenses I could get for Sony so go check that out if you want to see the other options. The next lens I have is the Tamron 70-28 which is filming now. Uh, it's a really, really nice lens. I really only use it for like the dance floor and the group shots. Um, other than that, it's not really something I use all the time. And I also use it for my YouTube videos, obviously, like vlogging. It's a really awesome lens. It's really lightweight, really sharp. Autofocus is really good. And it's a lot cheaper than the G Master 1635. So I have that lens. And then my last and final lens is this bad boy. So this is the Canon 45mm 2.8 tilt shift. Uh, and I have the MC11 adapter on there because obviously it's a Canon lens and I'm not shooting Canon. So um, obviously it's manual focus so you don't need the MC11 adapter but it does transfer all the data over from the file so you can see what shutter speed you're using and all that kind of stuff. And I just went for it because I know it works with other Canon lenses. If I happen to be borrowing somebody else's Canon autofocus lens, I can use it on this MC11 adapter. This lens, I got it second hand recently. I really only use this lens for some really interesting shots if I want to get some effects and I have the time to use it. Um, sometimes I use it a whole bunch at a wedding, sometimes I won't even pull it out of the bag. It's just really what I feel like doing at the time. But yeah, the Canon 45mm tilt shift. I haven't done a review on this lens yet, but once I've got some more images and had some more time with it, I'm going to give you guys a review on it as well. If it's something you're looking forward to, drop a comment below. So they are all the lenses I use. And like I said, I use mostly the 24 and the 85 with two A7R3s. That's my combo. That's what I use for weddings. That's what I've been using for the last, since the 24mm came out. And I got it the day of its release, so I've been using it for quite a while. And I really, really dig that combo. Now, if I was going to change something, I would still keep the 24mm and I'd just swap the 85 for the 55mm 1.8. Uh, that's a much more usable focal length for me. 
Obviously I like to shoot wide being on the 24mm most of the time and the 85 would be just for the ceremony and reception like I said. 24 and 55 I feel like I'd use the 55 a whole lot more than the 85. I did own that lens in the past and I am planning on buying it again. I just these days tend to not buy stuff unless I'm actually going to use it on often. So we'll see what happens. Now before I was talking about the battery grips which I had on my camera which you guys seen there. So this is the Sony battery grip. Um, it's not something I use a lot like I said but if I'm having a really intense wedding and I don't want to have to worry about changing batteries I'll just chuck two in here and that'll do me for a whole day. It doesn't matter how long the day is it'll do the job. If I'm not using the battery grip I'm never using the Sony bodies um, without any plate because they just don't feel right in my hands. I do have quite large hands and they're not overly comfortable. So I use these plates. The best thing about these plates is they incorporate the battery door into it. So this is a Gabelli, I think that's how you say it. Maybe, I don't know, I'm not very good at pronouncing words. I don't even know where it's from, but I got this from eBay um, and it's basically a copy of the one that I have on my other camera, which is a really right stuff uh, branded one. But I tell you, it's basically the same thing and if it didn't have the badge on it, it would be very, very hard to tell them apart. They both feel like the same kind of quality. So if it was me, I'd probably just go for this one. I will put a link in the description below with that. But they do add just a little bit of grip. So they kind of just take my finger um, so it's not like flopping around on the bottom of the camera. So I love those. And it also does have the Arca Swiss um, tripod plate mount there so you can put it straight in a tripod which is what I'm using now and it has another thread on the bottom so one minute it's in my pocket so I can chuck these uh, little black rapid straps which I have and that just screws into the bottom and that goes into my dual harness leather strap that I'm about to show you guys so this is my dual harness strap most of you guys know the Money Maker, which is the one you buy from America. I did have one of those a long time ago, the actual Money Maker one, and uh, it was a great strap. It's, to be honest, almost identical as this, and this was about half the price. The only thing I did was change these. If you have a Money Maker strap, you'll know these, see these aren't round like the ones you get. I changed the round ones out for these rectangular kind of um, uh, whatever they're called rollers or whatever and that has completely stopped the strap from catching on my shirt if you have a money maker strap I know you've experienced it and it can pinch okay so that just goes on like so and I have my thing and obviously I look really awesome which is the most important thing my cameras go on here and uh, I'm good for the day it takes the weight off the shoulders so this one was from Tauranga from a guy called The Knot Leather is the company. I'll link that below. If you're in New Zealand, obviously that's going to be a go. If you're in America, I'm guessing you'd probably just buy the money maker. Uh, but yeah, that's my camera strap. And then when I'm using just one camera, I have this one, which is also from The Knot Leather. And it's just basically a single, as it looks, leather camera strap. The only difference is I've used these Peak Design links, which go into the Peak Design clips on my camera. Um, so really strong, really easy to get the strap on and off. And that's what I'm using when I'm just using one camera. So let's jump into audio because that's one of the next biggest things. So basically my main workhorse is this Tascam. Uh, it's a DR44WL. Um, I really like it. I did have the Zoom H4N Pro before this. The reason I really like this one is because it records dual levels, so it records one track at the volume you set and then one 12 dB less at the same time. So if you peek out on your top track, then you can use that backup one and it's really nice. Um, also it turns on a lot faster and it just has a few little improvements. Um, I believe the sound quality is a little bit better, but I'm not a sound guy, it's just what I heard in all the reviews. But I am really happy with it. It has XLR and quarter inch inputs in the bottom. I have done a review on this also, but that's my audio recorder and then I have the cables a whole bunch of different ones but this is the one I usually use so it has an XLR input on the one end and then a quarter inch on the other end which will go into most DJs or venues audio systems will have a quarter inch in their system so you can record the vowels and the speeches and stuff like that so that is my main source of audio the next way I record audio is with the Rode Wireless Go system so this is the new one I'm recording with it now and I'm also using the Video Micro plugged into the Rode 
wireless go receiver i can't show you but this is what they look like now these things are really great and they're super cheap super reliable the battery lasts for ages you can charge them via usb-c the only pain in the ass bit is you kind of have to have two usb-c cables if you want to charge them at the same time so i'm going to try and find a splitter or something like that but they are really good um, you can control the audio levels from the one on the camera and that's just a really good way to do it. You can also plug in a lav mic with it. So this is just a cheap um, lav mic that will go on the bride or the groom, usually the groom. And this will plug into the receiver as well if you want to use that. Totally up to you. That's what I use. I also do carry some the old school Apple um, earphones, the ones with the actual plug on them. Um, obviously this is like an antique now because Apple don't use a headphone jack anymore. But... I use those to plug into the Tascam just to check audio levels and see if it's all sounding really good. The other option I have is the Saramonic, I think that's how you say it, audio receivers. So these are just like a big fat ugly version of the Rode Wireless Go ones. Um, it's the RX9 and the TX9. Um, honestly, I'm not a fan of these. They're a little bit twitchy. The audio quality isn't as good. I'm going to have to try them more, but I have used them at a few weddings and at every wedding I always had an issue. I don't know if it just got bad luck with those ones in particular, about my ones, maybe they're faulty, but I haven't had good luck with them, so I don't really use them anymore. So that's all the audio stuff. Now we're going to talk about lighting and flashes. So I use two flashes and they're both Godox V1S's. So these are the new ones. They have a little light built into them, which is really nice. So you can actually see there, it has a video light, which is really awesome. So you can have your camera on and that's sort of like lighting the dance floor as you're going around. If you're doing video as well, you can do that. And the menu is really nice, really easy to control. It has a really fantastic lithium ion battery. So it's a big battery pack and it lasts for a long time. It just slots in there like that. It has a USB-C charger which comes with it. Um, you can put gels on it. I just received a few other accessories. Godox did send me one of these and I bought another one. So uh, thanks Godox for supporting the channel, but I did buy another one and I'm really, really happy with it. The other thing is they have the proper clip system, not the little dial. So when you lock it into the camera, it has that lock and I find it just seats nicer in the Sony cameras. So they're my flashes. Like I said, I only use two of them. These will last me a whole weekend, three weddings, no worries back to back without having to charge them. So uh, I really love that. And that's my main flash. And then with the flashes, I have the new X2TS trigger. So I do have the X Pro S trigger, which was the latest one and it's really good. But I do find I get a few missed shots with this one. So I went ahead and I bought the X2TS and it's kind of a hybrid between the both. So it has the ABCDE down the side there so you can quickly access and change it. The dial's much, much nicer than the old one. And I've noticed after using this one, I've had not one single misfire with these flashes and that is game changer for me. So every time I click the shutter, it goes off. With this one, I do find it's a little bit temperamental. Um, I don't know if it's been wearing out a little bit. I have had it for about a year, and I do a lot of weddings. Obviously, I'm shooting about 50 weddings a year, so the, my gear does get thrashed proper. This X2TS one is a little bit bigger and uglier, but it works flawlessly, and I'm super happy with it. Can't honestly rave about that enough. If you're looking for flashes for Sony, I'd honestly just go straight for the V1S and the X2TS trigger, and you're pretty much set for most of the stuff you want to do. The V1 is really powerful as well, so you can use it outdoors to kind of overpower the sun if you want to get some model shots i do have a big 120 centimeter softbox that i have the adapter for i'm going to go out to the beach and shoot some photos with people with the v1s and just show you what it can do uh, that'll be in another video coming up soon so that's my flashes anyway now i do also have some video lights i hardly ever use them to be honest but they're great as a backup so for those i use the yongnuo yn300 mark 3 lights they have the same video light battery which is these ones uh, these are the Wasabi ones. They are the same ones that I use for my monitor. Um, and they're a really fantastic light. You can, with the Mark III, also plug in a hard power. And they're really, really bright. They have the barn doors. So if you feel like you want to light up the reception a little bit, or the speeches, um, they're a really great option. But I do find that they kind of annoy guests a little bit because they are quite bright. One of the tricks I've found is if you turn them on at the lowest setting and then turn them up when you need them, it's not surprising people as much and it doesn't tend to piss people off. 
but they are a little bit annoying and I would only use them if you really have to or for like special effects or something like that. Other than that for lighting I just used two cheap light stands they were like 50 bucks each they do the job they're heavy enough they're not going to fall over and they work really well. So I did just quickly want to touch on storage I do have the Pelican hard case that takes all my memory cards like so. Um, you'll notice I have one oddball one there which is a Panasonic card. Now I found Sony cameras can be a little bit temperamental with any other cards than the Panasonic's, the Sony's or the SanDisk Extreme Pro cards. I've used Lexar in the past and had constant issues. I know a lot of people say they haven't. It's just from my experience I've had issues with them so I only use the SanDisk Extreme Pro cards uh, which look like that. These ones are the 95 megabyte right ones. These are only the UHS-1 cards. If you want to get the UHS-2 cards go for gold. Uh, I find these work fine and I do also have two of the UHS-2 Sony Tough cards which are really amazing but they are quite expensive and the only reason I'm using them is because Sony sent me two of them for free. So they are the best. They definitely work better than any other card I've found but they are quite dear. And then in terms of backing up onto my computer and storage, I use two options. So I have these two. This is a Lacey Tough Drive, and then I have a Samsung T5 external SSD. This is a one terabyte SSD with USB-C. They're both USB-C actually. And with the Samsung one, I have all my current edits on. So this can take four or five weddings at a time, uh, including video and it's really great so it's really really fast I'll have my current edits on that and like I said all my backups and final ones I'll have on this one I also have a tripod this is a Manfrotto uh, 190 go tripod and I have a really nice Manfrotto head on there that's Arca Swiss as well it's it's quite sturdy um, it has the twist legs which I really like uh, I don't use it a lot if anything I just use it for YouTube but I do find sometimes I'll take it with me to a wedding and just set it up for the family photos. That way my crop is straight, I never have to crop anything later, they're all even and all nice and I'll just use the Tamron 70 to 28 mil for those photos and it's just a much more efficient way to get them out if I remember to set it up. So it depends how many photos I have going on as well. And then lastly in terms of video tools I do have the slider which I've just done a review on. Uh, this is a Zipon Micro 2 slider I think and I just have a Siri uh, camera ball head on top of that. Uh, I've already done a video on that you can check it out in the links below. Now I do also have this low pro um, pouch thing that came with my camera bag so I have a Pro Tactic 2 camera bag uh, 450 and that takes my laptop and all the camera gear no problem at all and in here I just keep all my basic accessories like spare batteries cleaning things um, I have the Sony BX1 finger grip which I really don't use at all but it's nice to use sometimes you know it's all in here you can zip it up chuck it in the bag and you're good to go now last but not least all the accessories that you wouldn't think of and may not necessarily be anything to do with photography but nevertheless are super important in terms of a wedding day. The first one, painkillers. If you've been doing this for a while, I don't know about you but I get a bad back and sometimes you can hurt yourself if you're sick or anything like that. I'm not a fan of painkillers, I don't take them unless I really have to. I've had this box in there for a while but I like to have painkillers. These are Panadol and Nurofen mixed in together. So just a little bit of pain relief if I'm struggling in the day. At the end of wedding season it can be a long summer and my back can be sore and sometimes you just need pain relief. The next thing is socks. You've got to have a pair of fresh socks. The amount of times I've had wet feet and you can set your shoes off to dry during dinner or something like that and you can change into a fresh pair of socks for the rest of the day is just amazing. It's a really great feeling. Trust me, take a pair of socks and a shirt as well, a spare shirt. Also have a blower for Sony cameras or mirrorless cameras in general. It's a little bit more of an issue so you want to have a blower so you can get all that dust off if you see any spots or anything like that. I carry a Leatherman with me. Um, so this is a Leatherman rebar. Um, it's just a basic one but it has pliers, a um, little cutter there. It's got a knife, screwdriver attachments like flatheads. It's got um, you know saw, bottle openers. It has a whole bunch of stuff. The amount of times that I've had to use this to cut tags off ties or shirts, um, changing camera plates. I even fixed a bracelet one time for a bride with it. It's a really, really good thing to have. 
I also carry a GoPro. This is mostly for you guys, so sometimes I'll put this on top of my camera. But I am planning on doing a whole bunch for the season, so this uh, is just like on a little cold shoe mount here, and that just sits on top of my camera, and you guys can see and hear everything I'm doing on a wedding day. I also carry this little copper tube here, which um, is for the ring of fire photos. I've done a video on that also. But basically it just creates a really cool effect. I'll put a sample photo up so you guys can see what I'm talking about there. The next thing I carry with me is this Yui Boom. It's just a Yui Boom Micro, I think, or Mini or something like that. And I have it on a little carabiner clip so I can clip it to my camera bag. And then when we're off doing bridal party photos and just having a really good time, having a couple of drinks, making everybody laugh, it kind of goes along with my whole theme of just getting really natural emotion and natural looking photos. So music is a really good way to help people relax. So I always take that with me for the bridal photos. Other than that, I have my iPhone. So this is an iPhone 11 Pro Max. Um, and I really only use it for like those reflection shots uh, when you hold it up to the camera. I'll see if I can find some photos and put them here if I did. But uh, I don't really use the camera, although it is really good and I'm starting to use it more. Do you guys want to see what I think about the iPhone 11 Pro? <laughs> I don't know. Comment below if you want a review from a photographer's point of view about the iPhone 11 Pro Max. That's it guys. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions about any of this stuff here, comment below. I'll answer them as soon as possible. Otherwise, thanks for following along and I'll see you in the next video coming up soon.